Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, JG Swayze, a.k.a. Mr. TikTok, a.k.a. Swayze Guy, dropping in for the fourth episode of Swayze Speaks. And today I'll be talking about the secrets of how to vibrate at a high frequency and binaural beats. Some of you have heard of it before, some of you have not heard of it before, but today we definitely going to talk about it. You hear me? Let's go. So first and foremost, I would like to take a moment to actually uh, have a moment of silence and give R.I.P. to a uh, Chicago artist, uh, really Victoria. I'm somebody that I've actually spoken to a few times and have actually talked to about her music and whatnot. Never actually got a chance to collaborate or meet, but somebody that's been in the scene in Indianapolis and Chicago that I have a lot of respect for. So rest in peace to that young lady. And also this morning we found out that Juice World passed away, so rest in peace to him. So I know a lot of people talk about good vibes, bad vibes, frequencies, and things of that nature, but none of them ever mentioned the unit of frequency, which is the hertz. You know what I mean? So I will explain to you what a frequency is. So a frequency is basically the number of waves that pass through a fixed place at any given time. So therefore, if it takes me half a second to get from A to B, I'm moving at two cycles per second, meaning that I'm moving at two hertz. So let's run it back again. <laughs> if I'm moving from A to B and it takes me one second to get to A to B, I'm moving at one cycle per second. You know what I'm saying? So that means I'm moving at one hertz. Get it together. You know the math. That's smart. So to add on to that, I like to talk about low vibes, high vibes, and things of that nature and how they can affect you. So a lot of people don't know that the chakras, all seven of them, are tuned to different frequencies as well. And those frequencies are within the realm of what we as human beings can hear audibly, which is between the ranges of 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. So that's anything from a bass line to uh, a high-pitched squealing noise, you know what I mean? The things that are outside of those ranges are below 20 hertz, so such things as like a, a sine wave, you know, that's below what you can hear in your threshold, or uh, radio frequencies are way above 20k hertz, you know what I mean? So that's something that you can't hear. Uh, but other ways that you can hear a radio frequency is by through um, interference. So picking up a phone and you hear that screeching noise on the phone, that's the radio wave interfering with the, the phone line. So now you can audibly hear that frequency, but you can't necessarily hear it to the naked ear, you know what I mean? So looking at these charts that I provided, you can tell how you can affect your sacral and your root chakras. So the root chakra is the first chakra and is located at the base of the spine. It is the root of your being and establishes the deepest connections of your physical body, your environment, and with the earth. The sacral chakra, that's responsible for movement, flow, pleasure. If you lack it in those things anywhere in your life, it's because those chakras are blocked. And if you have those chakras blocked, you can also unblock them. Don't worry about it. You can unblock them. There's different ways to do it. You can do it through crystals or you can do it the way that I'm about to explain to you, which is through binaural beats. You hear me? Now, we all know the trees grow from the root, so I'm only starting from the root and the sacral chakra so that way I can help you realign and move your way up, you know what I mean? So I could also talk about all seven different chakras, but we're going to start from the base and work our way up. So moving on to theta frequencies, which is what I would love to talk to you all about that delves into binaural beats. Theta binaural beats are essentially sound waves with a frequency that resonate in the theta range. Take a look at this chart. The frequency range is considered to be 4 to 8 hertz, but it's often cited as 4 to 7 hertz. The human ear cannot hear within that range, as I told you earlier. So the only way to combat that or the only way that they uh, manipulate that is by adding theta waves to waves that we can actually hear. So it could be something along the lines of like a bass line. So uh, I want to say bass frequency is anywhere between 60 to 250 hertz. So you can combine that with a 7 hertz beta binaural, sorry, theta binaural beat. Mix them together. That way you're relaxing and you're hearing the bass line at the same time. Um, you've also heard the ohm that a lot of monks use. That's, that's not just for show. That's also the, the mixture of, of uh, binaural beats with that bass frequency that you're amplifying from within. You hear me? Trees grow from the root up. So if you're already blocking your roots, how do you expect growth? Theta binaural beats are basically sound waves with a frequency that resonates within the theta range, which can be between four to eight hertz, but we typically cut it off at about seven. And as I told you earlier, the human ear can only hear between 20 to 20 K hertz. So in order for you to even apply those theta waves to your everyday life or to be able to use them to tune your frequencies or do things of that nature you just have to infuse them with ways that you can hear so a lot of the times these um beats these binaural beats binaural theta beats are infused with um 
let's say, meditative music like ambient music, natural music, ocean music, uh, earthly music, things of that nature, things that are, are tonal and very low in frequency so that way you can resonate with them and vibe with them in a way that it combines with that theta uh, binaural beat wave and tunes you up, man, get right. So when these beats are laid underneath meditation style music or ambient music or things of that nature, when you listen along, your brain is encouraged to follow suit and produce more of these low frequency theta binaural beat waves in your mind. And also it encourages your brain to peel back on some of the high frequency beta frequencies in your mind that are causing confusion, causing um, disdain, causing anxiety, causing stress, things of that nature. So that is how you combat that. So listening to theta infused music is going to help you calm down. It's going to reduce any tension, anxiety that you feel. These waves correlate creatively with your insight and intuition. And it makes sense because when we relax, we turn our thoughts inwards and we really focus with our mind and we focus on increased clarity among the valleys of our thoughts. We can really tune in and get things done that we need to get done. So applying this to musicians, naturally creative people such as musicians and artists are said to have high operating beta levels. So, sorry, high operating levels, levels of theta when we're engaged in our craft, meaning that I have high levels of those theta waves that I really need for creativity while I'm making beats, while I'm working, while I'm creating something. But however, we suffer writer's block and that is from the blockage of those waves or the, the, the bare production of those waves, the bare generation of those waves in my in my mind, the theta waves, the ones that I need. The beta ones, not so much. So with that being said, I'll end it off with eight tips on vibrating at a higher frequency. I've given you the math, I've given you the science, I've introduced binaural beats to you. I've told you about, you know, how depression in music and depression through music can really change and affect the outcome you have in life. Don't listen to it to amplify that feeling. Listen to it to get through that feeling. There's a difference. There is a difference. Tip number one, be conscious of your thoughts. The things that you think about and you say that manifest are in your control and under your control only. Anything that you think about, anything that you want to feel is your responsibility, your obligation, and you are in control of that. Don't blame nobody else. Be mindful of it. Tip number two, find appreciation of something new. Don't keep doing the same things over and over again trying to find appreciation in that. Stop beating a dead horse. Go outside, meet a new person. Uh, talk to somebody new, learn a new trade, learn a new skill, and appreciate it. Learn, find the beauty in it that only you will be able to appreciate and keep going forward with that. That's self-care. And number three, something that we all should honestly be looking out for is being conscious of the things that you put in your body. I don't even have to delve into that, so I'm just going to go straight to number four. And drink more water. Balance those pH levels. And I don't have to tell you what water you should be drinking and what water you shouldn't be drinking because in 2019, going into 2020, there's too much information on the internet for y'all not to have that figured out, for real. Number five, meditate or pray. So what I do, since I'm a Muslim, I pray five times a day, and what we do is we prostrate during our prayer. So the physical and physiological benefits of Salat, or making Salat, are multiple to say the least. Most of the body muscles and joints are exercised during Salat, from the bending, the praying, the bowing, the kneeling, prostration, things of that nature. It's noteworthy that the movement of prostration besides the limb muscles, the back, and the the perineum muscles, all of those are exercised repeatedly during that. So make sure that when you do meditate or you do yoga, things of that nature, you're stretching and, and, and all of that. Be mobile. You know what I mean? Number six, be grateful. So there are certain things in this life that we can change and certain things in this life that we can't change. So my only advice to y'all, be grateful. There's certain things that you just have that other people don't have that they wish they had. Be grateful for the things that you have. For real. Number seven. Practice acts of kindness. It doesn't have to be a random act of kindness. It doesn't have to be a planned act of kindness. An act of kindness is something that's going to help you vibrate at a higher level because you're putting out good energy at a good rate, a good frequency. You're going to receive it. What you give is what you receive. Energy cannot be destroyed or created, but only transferred. So what you're putting out there, what you're going to get back. Number eight, get your blood pumping. Keep going. Exercise. Just like I said, it goes back to number five, but number five is basically based on meditation. But number eight, get your ass up and get to exercise. So you have tuned in to episode number four of Swayze Speaks. Today I was talking about binaural beats and also how to vibrate at a higher frequency. Thank you for tuning in. Mr. TikTok, out. Chill.